how difficult it may be to create your own game and publish it, make something playable, put it online and show it to your friends. It's about 10 minutes. So let me show you how. What we need is Godot and Edge. Run Godot then create a new project. Choose a path and compatibility mode. For our case, we are going to put the game on Edge and make it playable in a browser. So that's why compatibility is the best what you can choose here. In Godot, we work with nodes and scenes. Let's create the first scene, which will be map. But before that, we shall tune the settings a little. We are going to make 2D platformer, and for that we need Talmap. When you prepare a game, sort of prototype, you will need some assets. You can make it easy for yourself, just use rectangles with single color, like green colors, red colors, but we can make it nicer from the start and use some existing assets. I like this one by Kynos, which contains everything you might need for your prototype. And this beautiful capybara by Rayondov. Obviously you can use your own assets, but if you want to publish your game, be sure that you can do it with respect to license. So in our project, let's create a folder named Art and put everything there. To make things easier, I took the capybara asset, separated it frame by frame and made little changes. Not necessary for you to do it, I just did it long time ago and since that time I'm using it, so it's fine. But if you just want to do something, this step is not necessary. Let's change some settings. We have 32 times 32 pixels and to move on we need to create a new tileset. As you can see, Godot immediately understood what I'm trying to do, took the PNG and separated it to the tiles. Now there is nothing easier, I can just choose one and draw my map. I should save the scene, where the scene is a map, and when I run it, it looks like that. Nothing much is happening, but it's doing something already. The map is not so nice like that, we can use great feature of Godot and make it beautiful in no time. So let's erase it and uh, create a new terrain. terrain I have an option to specify all tiles I want to use and give them a bit mask. The bit mask, just you know what's bit, it's 0 and 1, specify how tiles can be connected. You can imagine every tile composed of 9 bits. The middle one is always there, but if this particular tile can be connected with something on the left, the left square will be colored, the same for the right, the same for up, the same for down, and the same for corners. If this tile can be connected through corner with another tile, this particular square, this one ninth of the tile, will be marked and colored. If you get used to it, it's actually pretty easy. You can check Godot manual where is a picture how the tiles should look like to cover every possible combination you might need. Now if I want to draw and I put one tile, the Godot will choose from my tiles the one which doesn't have any neighbors. And that's this one. Similarly, when I decide to draw something more complicated, the same algorithm applies. And it already looks way better. I can make it even better very quickly when I choose and mark more tiles which are in my tile sheet. You can do it, it's up to you. And if you do it and uh, Godot can choose between several tiles applicable on the same location, he will do it by random. This is what happens. Now is the time to create a player. I create a new scene, and again, there is a part node which I can change for character body 2D. It doesn't matter much, I can create a child for the node or change the type of the node. In this particular case, it doesn't matter much. 
so let's do it the opposite way than we did for the map. And as you can see, we are missing some things here as collision shape, let's add it, and let's choose how our collision will look like. Rectangle, why not? Your character is not going to be colliding based on its appearance, but based on its geometry, and this is what it is. Now we are going to add an animations, again, very easy. Here I should just specify how many cells the animation has and because I prepared my capybara in this certain way, it's very easy for me. Let's play it, let's see, it looks beautiful. And I can also change the speed, you can tune it as you need, whatever you like, whatever you think looks best. Now we just align the geometry with it and that's about it. We can put our scene character to our map scene. That's what's gonna happen and we can run it again. Yeah, it's there, but it doesn't do anything. So let's add some logic. For this in Godot we use scripts and you can choose various languages. We are going to use the default one, it's very easy. What we want to do with our character is to make it movable, and for that we can use a default template. See how easy it is. Let's choose it for our capybara. And you know, something already happened. We added a logic to the world and things such as gravity, and yes, it's falling down. We defined the collision, we defined the geometry for our player, but we didn't define the geometry for the terrain. So let's do it. We added the terrain layer before, now let's add physics layer. Now simply choose all tiles you want to use, it can be all tiles available, and mark them. You can draw the physics in a way more complicated way. Every single tile can be covered by quite complicated polygon, but this is very nice asset, these are very nice tiles. Make it rectangular, it will be fine for most of them, and it's just a prototype, it's alright. And before we run it, let's get back to our player and add a new animation. Now, Capybara, when it's standing, doesn't do anything. You couldn't see it before because it felt immediately. But walking would make it perfect. So as same as before, choose name for it, choose sprite, check if the speed is all right, try to play it, enjoy. Now we need to choose between these two animations. When we need idle, the speed should be zero, the capybara should be standing. When we need walking, the capybara should be moving. I can choose based on direction. When direction is zero, nothing's happening. When it's one or minus one, it's moving right or left. Very nice. Another issue is that the capybara is not changing direction. Easy to fix. We have horizontal flip flag in Goro, let's apply it in the same way as before, based on the direction. Here be careful, it's not else if, it's a if. And also we can slow it a little bit down, because the capybara moves very fast now. Let's make it even nicer and add a background. I'm going to use this one by Sam Wheaton, I hope I'm not butchering his name. And in Goro this is simple texture rect, like texture rectangle. And this is it, looks, looks perfect. Let's continue the tuning. Uh, I noticed that because I didn't choose enough tiles, the terrain is not connected quite well. Let's change it, let's redraw it. As you can see, I'm adding some tiles on the side. They are not going to be visible. They are outside of the player viewport but they will be there and we need them there because of the physics. So the player cannot fall down from our platform. It's one of the sneaky tricks we use in game dev. And now let's publish it. We have everything we need so we can put it online and let other people to play. We are going to export as HTML5 
very straightforward. You might need some templates when you are going to do it for the first time, but Goro will show you everything step by step. So let's go to each. If you don't have a profile, you can create one and let's create a new game, new project. Here you should fill up some details. Important is the kind of the project HTML. Now upload a zip file with everything what Goro gave you. Check this file will be playable in browser. Very important. We don't want our players to install anything, download anything. Just come there and play. It's loading and voila! Congratulations for your first game. It doesn't do much. It just look somehow. You can move, you can jump, but it's a great start. Want to continue and they just drop a comment we can add more things collectibles some exit some actual point something what players should do just for the end because the tile set is very rich we can do more changes we can add another tile set from the same group and make it beautiful just add some assets if you don't define geometry for them as for the trees and the stones you can walk through them this is our final version That will be all for today. I hope you learned something. I wish you lots of resistance with your own personal projects and see you next time.